Food chains and food webs are diagrams that help biologists to study feeding relationships and the flow of energy through an ecosystem. The simplest model of energy transfer with a community or ecosystem is a food chain. All food chains begin with some type of producer capable of transforming light or inorganic chemicals into organic compounds or nutrients. This transformed energy can then be passed on from one step of the food chain to the next through ingestion of these nutrients by consumers. In this example, the producer is a flowering plant, which uses the process of photosynthesis to convert water and carbon dioxide into glucose. This food can then be consumed by the insect, which is in turn consumed by a bird and then a snake. The arrows between the organisms display the direction of energy flow from the producers on up through the different consumers. As mentioned before, producers must make up the base of any food chain also known as the first trophic level. These organisms are capable of transforming inorganic compounds into organic compounds that can be used in the process of respiration where organisms access energy for life processes like growth, movement, and reproduction. Producers use either the process of photosynthesis or chemosynthesis to accomplish this. The process of photosynthesis uses light energy, while chemosynthesis in the deep sea uses thermal energy, or heat, where light is unavailable. Both processes create carbohydrates, thus creating the base of the food chain. The first consumers to access this food are the herbivores, which are the primary consumers. This means that they are the first level of consumer above the producers. Since they are not capable of creating their own foods like the producers, they must ingest food in order to get energy. This process continues through each level of the food chain and may include a variety of different types of consumers including herbivores, which only eat plant material, carnivores, which only consume other animals, and omnivores, which can consume both. As energy is transferred from one level to the next through a food chain, the fraction of energy available as compared to the original amount provided by the producers significantly decreases. In most ecological communities, approximately 10% of the available energy is transferred onto the next trophic level of a food chain. This is because the organisms must use some of the energy they acquire for basic life processes, and much of the energy is given off in the form of heat. This continual decrease in available energy limits the number of trophic levels present in a food chain. A more realistic representation of energy flow, though more complicated, is a food web. Food webs are more accurate because they include more of the different types of organisms present within a community, rather than just one per trophic level. In this particular food web for the Chesapeake Bay, there are numerous organisms on each trophic level and the various energy paths show why this type of diagram is referred to as a web. Though more complicated, this diagram better represents the complicated relationships that occur between organisms in a particular community. The application and uses for food webs and food chains are countless. In general, biologists can make predictions for how organisms can be affected by different changes in their environment. For example, weather patterns that severely lower primary production by the producers in an ecosystem will have impacts on the organisms that rely on those producers as the foundation for their food web. Pollution can also influence a community of organisms through the process of biological magnification, where a toxic compound may be absorbed by primary producers and then passed on through the rest of the food web. Using this knowledge, a biologist can predict which species are likely to contain the highest and lowest concentrations of toxins, some of which may be important food sources for humans in that community. Food webs can also help to inform responsible hunting practices and take limits for recreational and commercial fishing. The potential impacts of invasive species can also be better understood. Thank you for watching this video on food chains and food webs. Please visit the Purdue Global Academic Success Center's YouTube channel to watch more videos like this.